Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Uh, a warm welcome here from us at Alphatron Electronics. Uh, welcome to our webinar today. Today, we're going to be talking about our AV over IP solutions as well as our SMW42S. Uh, my name is Michael von Rensburg. I'm Marina von Eerden. And we hope you'll enjoy our presentation today. So to kick us off, uh, we're going to be looking at the AV over IP devices and talk about our agenda just quickly. Give you guys a rough overview. A little yeah, starting off with the Alphatron IP2HE and Alphatron IP2HD. Then we'll be looking at the SMW42S, the ALF SMW42S. And then we'll be looking at some application examples for both of those products. Mm -hmm. And then a Q&A session. And then a conclusion right at the end. Perfect. Okay, let's kick off with the IP2HE, the encoder version of that. Uh, Mike, do you want to chat yeah. us through it? So the, the encoder, um, and again, we're talking about AV over IP devices here. So we are talking about a device that basically will convert your video stream, your, yep. your video HDMI input. input yep. In this case, an HDMI, HDMI input, yes, Marinus. And it will give us a LAN um, port output, an IP output. So you can basically connect the device to your, your local network and, and PoE send... powered. It's PoE powered as well yeah. as obviously a power supply, so ideally a PoE network switch. Um, and then also it, the output stream is H.265, which is uh, the new version of 264, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're looking at inputs like Mike mentioned, HDMI input. Uh, then we have the LAN PoE port output in essence in this case. You also have a local audio output to de-embed the local, the local audio right there at the input. And then yeah. RS-232 as well, which then will switch with the video input. So you can in essence control a projector, you can control a, a monitor if it's RS-232 controllable monitor, and it will always follow the input in that case. Yeah, for me the, the, the audio de-embedding feature is actually quite, uh, quite useful because yes. you always want to try and see if you can and monitor either the, the audio that is streaming correctly. Uh, or, alternatively, you might want to amplify audio in that specific space. Perhaps you have it in the you rack, know? installed in the rack, so you could already de-embed it right in the rack. You don't need to worry about de-embedding it. It would just be a nightmare too. Yeah. Then you'd have to have another decoder right there or de-embed it before the HMI input or something. So way yeah. easier, local audio output. Um, yeah, that's basically it. We can actually look at the decoder mm -hmm. next. Yeah, They're both pretty similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. In terms of how they physically look, they're they're very similar, um, just on 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 the physical dimensions as well. And uh, they basically just the the HD version is the is the decoder, and the HE version is the encoder. encoder. Correct. And pretty much that's the the difference between them. So basically, this is pretty much a swap around. So now we have a LAN PoE as the input, mm -hmm. uh, the video input in this case, and then everything else moves to output. So we have a HDMI output. Uh, RS-232 output, and as well as a far side or, or audio output right there at, at the monitor, depending on what your requirement is. Correct, yeah. That's basically that. On these guys, everything's PoE powered, all power supply po uh, powered. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So again, just in terms of um, the PoE, that really makes it very, very quick and easy absolutely. to use because it's a one cable solution. Yes. You know, so from your source, HDMI cable straight into your encoder, uh, LAN cable, PoE powered from the network, from the network switch. Correct. Distribute it anywhere on the property, yes. um, where the where the network obviously goes. Pick it up over one or two hops over over different networks. Fiber links, anything. Fiber links as well through the network switches, yeah, because it's it's just basic uh, IP communication. Yes. TCP it's, IP it's, IP rules apply. So 100 yeah. meters in between. If you're doing a straight connection, you can do 100 meters. If you're doing a switch, all the TCP IP rules would apply to that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, then we, we will obviously chat about a couple of applications after this as well. Then mm -hmm. we'll maybe discuss the limit, the limitation, or the mm -hmm. suggested limitation with, with these guys. You don't require a managed switch for this. This is actually really almost a zero configuration tool. Uh, one thing actually we didn't mention, Mike, while we're on there, there's also a little button in the front oh, of yes. the decoders, yes. um, which if you hold it in for two seconds, it switches this all the, through all the available sources. Single press will also just show you the IP address of the device, uh, if uh, and basically the MAC address name. So if you need to control it or whatever, easy way to find the MAC address of the device. Single press, you'll see that on the screen displayed. And if you hold it in for two seconds, we'll just cycle through 
to all the encodes. Yeah. These are also controllable. There's an API guide for them available. So you could, in essence, also route through a Crestron, Extron, whatever third-party control system. Mm -hmm. You could always route, uh, do some routing changes, some presets and stuff, routing, in essence, a specific MAC address to a specific MAC address of a decoder. Correct, yeah. And, uh, and I want to expand a little bit on that on that easy function, Marinus, because that's, yes. that really makes it a plug-and-play solution. Correct. You, you plug one or two or three uh, encoders into your network, how, how many ever you need, mm -hmm. and you can then do a one-to-many distribution. Yes. You can do one-to-one. -one. You can have many-to-many. -many. So it really, as, as simple as you said, Absolutely. plug in your decoder at your, at your display and cycle through until you pick up the right source, and, and you're done. Absolutely, and it's also modular. So I've seen it plenty of times before where you need five inputs and four outputs. That immediately forces you to buy an 8x8 eight eight matrix because unless you go for a 4x4 four four matrix. Yeah. So no compromise. If you, at a later stage, need more inputs, you add another encoder onto the system, and that's it. So Simple. flexible. Actually works out cost-effective. Depending on your I.O. configuration, it would be more cost-effective. It could be more cost-effective than a matrix mm. in that case. Perfect. Especially if you're looking at HD-based T-matrix because you, in essence, need CAT cabling to extend it or whatever. So this yeah. could be quite cost-effective. PoE, unmanaged PoE plus switch, and you sort it. Good. But uh, that's not all, as yes. they say. <laughs> in the business. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll get back to a couple of uh, the additional extra features yes. um, that the uh, IP, AV over IP devices have. So we'll, we'll save those for later, that's what I say. <laughs> but that's not box. all. All right. So next up is the SMW42. Uh, this is one of the new kits on the block. Uh, yes. It's been out now, I think, for what, about a month, month or two? About. Uh, that has been available uh, out on the market from us. And, uh, yeah, very, very good device. Take 100%. us through it, Marinus. Great. So we, in essence, have uh, four inputs. So we have the two HDMIs, the VGA, and the USB-C input. That's the four in the model number, of course. And then the VGA obviously has an audio in, two HDMIs. The USB-C in is great for the new Macs and a lot of other new Windows PCs also coming out with a USB-C Thunderbolt sort of connection that's mm -hmm. obviously able to push video. Not all, all uh, PCs currently with a USB-C connection necessarily can push video over that, but this will definitely push uh, video out of a Mac, for example. You also have three USB, uh, USB type A connections at the top. Mm -hmm. This, in essence, connects, uh, it's, it's, in essence, a USB hub. We also have two host connections with USB Type-B connections. These, in essence, they also switch automatically, so first in, first out. So we could have two PCs, in essence, run, run for example, let's say you have two pop-ups, perhaps one pop-up with USB-C, mm -hmm. two pop-ups with uh, each an HDMI, and each a USB-A connection going into a USB type B connection onto this guy. Uh, and both people could in essence share, not share, but can switch between the USB hub connections. And also the other big thing is if you connect a device to the USB-C, those three USB ports will also pass to the USB-C. Yeah. So once again, I think USB-C is the future in that, in that case. Uh, so you could actually, that's a, a true single cable uh, solution. Correct, yeah. You can connect your camera, perhaps a audio DSP that's got USB audio or whatever in, into that, all into one cable. So that's the basics of that. Uh, it's got two HDMI outs. That's the two in the model number. So we, <laughs> we figured out the four and we figured out the two. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's in essence the two HDMI outputs. In essence, one is your main display. The second one could be used either as a, like a confidence monitor mm -hmm. or whatever. There's an on-screen display which you can connect a wireless mouse to the front, for example. And then you can choose, in essence, what's happening. Either output one follows output, uh, output two follows output one, or output two could also be uh, something completely different. You can read a specific source to that or whatever. This is also has the ability to show you up to seven sources yes. on, on one screen. Yep. Uh, in, in the multi-view function, 100%. That, that's available so on output HDMI two, output one. Uh, output one could be multi-screen, mm -hmm. correct? Uh, if you're wondering how you possibly get seven inputs, because we only have four, <laughs> there's, of course, the built-in access point, uh, Wi-Fi access point in this. You could also connect it to your LAN, your, your corporate network, um, and then, in essence, the Android or, or the Samsung Smart View, uh, Apple AirPlay, uh, Miracast from your PC straight, so you could connect literally mm -hmm. on Windows 10, uh, connect to a wireless display, and you will find it, either through the its own built-in AP, which could be disabled, or through the LAN. Going to your to your, yeah. to your corporate network. Yeah. RS232, two RS232 connections at the moment. Uh, one is for control. The other one is, is currently for future use. 
And that is the basics. Yeah. So it is a, a basically a wireless uh, presentation matrix switcher. Correct. Um, and it allows you to, like you mentioned, take your peripheral devices, your cameras, your USB microphones maybe in, inside the room and bring that to multiple host PCs yes. and allow you to switch between those host PCs. On a first in, first out basis. So 100%. 100%. So that, yeah. that could be real nice. Uh, once again, we, it's always an issue with USB devices and stuff to get it into two points. So that's integrated into the system. I think maybe we can let the cat out of the bag with the decoder. I see You'll see the last item on mm -hmm. the slide at the moment is saying one Ethernet port for LAN and AV over, AV over IP. So what you could do, you could connect one of these decoders on the network. It will always follow or mirror HDMI output one. HDMI one is also the one giving you the audio output. So this mm -hmm. would also actually get audio output from there. Uh, yeah, and you can do a couple of these in using that as a source. Of course, that's a mirrored image, but yes, yeah. you can distribute that through the uh, the IP IP system, AV yeah. over IP system. Because now that will allow you to, for instance, if you have a, a bigger bigger boardroom, yes. you can have uh, your master screen on the front and use this as comfort monitors further down Correct. in the hall. As many um, as you need, yeah. Yeah, you can maybe even do it as a comfort monitor maybe inside the, the boardroom table. Yes. Or, or whatever the case is, you can literally send this anywhere. You can send it as an overflow room if it's a if it's a larger definitely uh, auditorium or, or, or a the company or something. Uh, correct, like yeah. That. <laughs> uh, and you can distribute that again on network to pretty much anywhere inside the building. Correct. To to as many receivers as you as you would like. It's not a it's not a one to one. It's a one to many. And uh, perhaps if it's a not a digital signage per se, but you could of course use it as a digital signage thing as well. You just need a, a, a DS player in the front end, mm -hmm. but you could always then switch from a normal encoder doing your normal digital signage in your in your company, and perhaps there's a switch over to to whenever the, the whole company in essence gets to gets to see whatever the presentation is. So that's also possible, yeah. and you can run it through your organization's network. Very good. That's pretty much it. Now we're going to look at some accessories for this. Yeah. Oh, Mike, you've got so it. I've I've already got it here in my hand. I've uh, been preempting it, Marinus. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in addition to being able to cast directly from a smartphone or a MacBook or a, a Windows PC, yes. um, if you have a, a laptop or something that's not capable of doing the casting, then uh, we've also provided a little HDMI wireless, HDMI wireless transmitter, uh, and that's the SMW42D. So, the, the wireless transmitter, which is this little unit you see on screen there, that plugs in as HDMI. It takes a few seconds, I think probably about 10 yeah, seconds to, to boot up. The little light turns blue, you press it, and it will immediately cast directly to um, yes. HDMI output one. So if you're using exactly. multi-screens in a room, it'll be on, on, on your HDMI one screen. Yeah. Uh, and then again, when the multi-view is active uh, as an auto function, yes. as more devices you, you add in, it will just reconfigure the devices, and you can have multiples of these as well. Correct. Yeah. Up to four, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And the nice thing about it being HDMI, your PC, whatever you have that's got HDMI output, in essence sees this as a normal display out. So no weird configurations required. There's no drivers that you need to run. Yeah. It's you plug it in and 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 you yeah. switch over to yeah. it. Yeah, it's normal display device. Hundred percent. So in, ease of use, and perhaps if it's guest that you don't want to give access to your network, your corporate network. That's, that's also that's also a good way to do it. Yes. And then uh, in addition, you'll see there's a, a bit of a USB. Uh, I think it's a A mini A, if I remember that's yeah. that size, um, to normal USB A connection, and that is just for power. So let's say you have a, a laptop or a device that's not giving enough voltage, uh, enough power to the to the device, you can boot it up with additional five voltage or Correct. five volts from your USB. I guess the in most cases that would probably be a, a Mac scenario because Macs seem to sometimes, especially if you're using some accessories or peripherals, mm -hmm. it might not push the power. I haven't noticed it on a, on, a, on a PC really with a local HDMI output that's connected. That's more yeah. than sufficient to power that five volts in, in that uh, HDMI output of your PC would definitely be enough to push this. But in case, worst case scenario, there's also the option to power it over that's USB. It. Yeah. Now the Mac solution without using any peripherals. 100%. <laughs> so in addition, we also have the USB-C adapter. Um, which is really as simple as the HDMI plugs in at the bottom of the unit. Uh, there's an HDMI connection inside there, and as long as they are in, then that becomes a USB-C solution to, to broadcast wirelessly from. 
Correct. From uh, any device that's USB-C video capable they can as push well. video over USB-C. Um, but uh, definitely MacBooks, they function 100%. Out, 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 the, out the gates, as they say. And, and very similar to the HDMI, it's not it's not a, like some of the competitors perhaps would have a USB that needs drivers and stuff. This USB-C is specifically for devices that's able to push video over USB-C once again. So once again, still no drivers. It in essence is just a USB-C to HDMI converter. Yes. And it, it functions in exactly that way. So plug it in and, and that's it. That's it. Cool. So those Good. are basically the accessories, the SMW42S. Uh, and now we can look at some use cases for both of these products, starting yep. with the IP, AV over IP stuff. So, the, the, of course, the most basic would be point to point. You could do, in essence, it would be similar to an HDBase-T. Of course, with HDBase-T, sometimes you get 150-foot. Um, uh, with, with this, of course, normal TCP IP mm -hmm. would apply. Uh, so you could, of course, do up to uh, 100 meters or... Yeah, and, uh, 260 <laughs> feet, I think it is. <laughs> Correct. So, yes, of course, that all works. Uh, as you can see on the monitor, uh, on your monitor, RS-32 can, of course, pass through. So if you have a control system, it, it's very similar to HDBS-T balance set in this scenario. In this specific case, unless you have a... You wouldn't actually be able to use a PoE injector because it wouldn't be powering both ways. So in this scenario, unless you're going through a switch, of course, but in this scenario, you would probably use power on, on, on both sides. Correct. But then... The one to many. This is where obviously a, a unmanaged switch, POE switch, would be ideal. You can have a single encoder to a bunch of decoders. Uh, what, in essence, the limitation or a safe a safe limit here would be for these, because as I mentioned, you don't require a AV a, a managed switch in this scenario. So, yeah. uh, in most cases, if you're sending one encoder to 50 decoders, uh, that that would be the ideal. You wouldn't really want to to have more than 50 decoders looking at a specific encoder because it's, there's obviously no, um, it's multicasting in essence through the entire network. Yeah. So that's obviously part of the zero configuration. It just makes everything easier than having to specify specific net, network switches and stuff. But 50 decoders is a very very safe solution for for this. Right, so that's the one to many. In essence, that is a modular distribution amplifier. Mm -hmm. You can have as many distribution amplifiers as, as, you, as you require. And then the fun part. Matrix or and or a video wall. So in this case, like I mentioned, this is in essence the same as one to many, except now it's many to many. Uh, so it would be, a, 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 you can have a bunch of decoders, uh, encoders going to a bunch of decoders that's routable and controllable. Uh, there's an app for this. It's called V-Director. Uh, it's available on the, 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 the Apple the Apple, Apple store. iOS store, yeah. I'm Apple iOS store. So I forgot what it's saying. <laughs> uh, it's, it will also be uh, available soon, hopefully on the Google Play. Um, and then also a Windows, a Windows, Windows version based, is coming up based very application soon. as well, yeah. So um, very easy. That's in essence where you would do root. You can do routing. Very interactive. It shows you a preview of every encoder. Uh, it shows you in essence what's going at the moment to every receiver. You could relabel your encoders and your decoders. You can connect an iPad and a PC. There's no reason you can't do that. You wouldn't be able to do that. And then of course there's also the option to build a video wall. The video wall is pretty simple. You go create a new video wall. You say you want a 2x2, two 3x3, two, three three, uh, 4x4. Four four. Uh, I think it might even be going to 16x16 16 16 or something ridiculous like that. But in essence, if you're doing a video wall with this, you can have normal monitors with HDMI inputs. Put one decoder behind each monitor. In the software, you combine those receivers. It, it pops up on the, on the monitors. It pops up a number and allows you to very quickly drag your receivers to the numbers, the corresponding numbers and that builds your video wall. Now, all those receivers would fall away in your receiver list and it would appear as a single receiver, which is your video wall, and you can just carry on and uh, drag and drop, in essence, yeah. your, your live previewed encoders into the decoders. And, and in this case, you can then have multiple uh, encoders and you can actually select different sources, like you, you mentioned, you can just switch sources very, very easily uh, on the video wall if you need to. Correct. Right, so... Next up, this is actually a bit of a preview of the iOS. Uh, they all look pretty similar. Uh, we've just been playing around with the iOS specifically at the start, but you will see on the left-hand side, 
is your RX list. The first item on the RX list is, in essence, you'll see it's called a 2x2-1. So that is obviously a video wall that was built in this demo. Just below that, there's a two-wall screen. So if you really want to just send one input uh, to all the screens, you drag and drop. There's all your TXs, all your transmitters or encoders at the bottom of the, of the page. And that is, in essence, where you can either drop that to all screens or you can drop it to the live screen uh, at the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the screen. And then another feature we actually haven't touched on, uh, CEC. These are also capable of CEC. So you'll see on the top right corner, there's a black screen and a white screen. That's display on, all displays on, all displays off. That can send CEC commands over the HMI outputs. But also you could, in this software, perhaps put in a hex or ASCII code for your RS-232 pass-through. So if you have a projector, whatever, you can also add in those power on, power off commands for those, and that could switch on everything on, everything off, in essence. So very simple, and of course, you have the, the familiar gear in the top right corner, which uh, is, in essence, all the settings. That's where you build the video wall, naming all your RXs and all your TXs, and uh, putting in those RS-232 commands that you need. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to maybe mention at this point, Marinus, yes. that um, we can actually direct everybody to our uh, Alphatron uh, YouTube channel. We have actually made, you and me, actually made a, yes. a, a very nice demonstration uh, of the actual application. Um, we directed, we did a live demonstration on our 2x2 video wall. Um, so you can actually go and, and view that. And we explain the, the process a little bit step by step. Building the video wall, labeling everything. Yes. Yeah, everything's in there. It's really it's really simple to use, actually. And that, that was sort of the point of, of these encoders and decoders. Yes. Zero configuration. 100%. Yeah. So, <laughs> so please, uh, when you get a chance, head over to Alphatron Electronics' YouTube channel yes. and uh, check it out. There's a couple of other videos in there, too, that, uh, that might be uh, of help. That's it. Good. Right. I'm just going to go back to the presentation. Right, so now we're going to look at a couple of, uh, well, actually one application example, and we'll just speak about that freely. Yep. But in essence, this is the back panel of the SMW42S. Mike, if you want to run us through that setup. Yes. So as Marina's has mentioned um, earlier, uh, if we start off, uh, I'm trying to orientate myself, your your top left side of screen, um, we, we're showing the, the Alphatron uh, camera, and uh, that's probably a 5X that you chose there. Yes. Which again, maybe to mention, that's what we what we are on. We're filming on a we're five. filming on a five X uh, Alpha Alphatron uh, cam, um, and uh, so that can come in as your as your camera inside your your boardroom or your meeting space or auditorium or whatever the the, yes. the venue might be. You know, small, medium, uh, or even some larger boardrooms that we can that we can cover with the SMW forty two. Um, so you can bring in, like I mentioned, your your camera in there. You can bring in. Uh, USB microphones, USB speaker pods, uh, any of these devices. So you can connect up to three USBs. Uh, but you would also be able to maybe plug in a, a USB hub in there and actually split it one once or so more um, and uh, get maybe one or two extra devices in there if, if need be. Um, then, so that's your, your three USBs as we mentioned. You'll see then at the bottom there, uh, the, the, the MacBook in this case, so the, the PC is connected via HDMI and the USB-B host. Uh, and again, that's all USB 2 connections. So the host, as we mentioned, will bring all your peripheral devices back to your laptop, to your PC. Yes. And your HDMI will send the information, the, 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 the visual information, back to the box. Uh, if you had a second PC connected on HDMI 2 and host port number 2, you would then connect, uh, or you would then be able to switch between those two, uh, either, again, through a third-party control system, um, which we would recommend, but you could also just switch on the front of the box um, and just select HDMI 1, HDMI 2, or then the USB-C, as we mentioned, which will be a single cable solution. So, again, yes. MacBooks, single cable solution, video and USB peripherals coming back, and it'll basically switch between the three. And the device that's, that's live or the device that's selected, so let's say you've selected HDMI 2, that's the device that will take control over the peripherals uh, in the room. Yes. Yes. So take us through the outputs of it. Cool. Uh, actually, before I forget, mm. there's one USB port in the front. So as we mentioned, you can buy these. These are obviously available separately, or there's also a bundle version available. But you can buy up to four of these. It's very simple to pair them. We have a little USB uh, connector, a converter for the front, or you could use the cable supplied for, for the back. 
also to pair it to the unit. So very straightforward to pair it, plug it in. Uh, a couple of seconds later, it says pairing started, then it mm -hmm. says pairing succeeded, and they are paired. So you could yeah. also, they are sort of interchangeable. And then we sell these uh, separately as well. So Correct. you can you can purchase, How many like you, you mentioned, up to, up to four that when connect to per, per device. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other thing I actually skipped over was the mini jack audio output on this, which, like I mentioned, is always HDMI one pictures out. Mm -hmm. uh, that could go into an amplifier. That could run a couple of speakers in the room. And then you will see we have the two HDMI outs connected to LED displays. And then we have a third one, which is connected to the LAN port. Uh, could, uh, like as you can see there, it's going through a switch. You could, of course, run it through your corporate LAN, which would also make it accessible wirelessly for wireless presentation to your, through your corporate's Wi-Fi. But in essence, yeah, you can add your AV over IP decoder devices on there as well, the IP2 HD, and add a couple of displays to that. Once again, it's a mirrored output of the HDMI 1. It's not a separate output. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's and that's basically it. So yeah, once again, it's, it's pretty nice if you have, let's say, perhaps two pop-ups, once again, running USB to each of those, running HDMI to both, running perhaps VGA to one, USB-C to the other one, depending on, on whoever uses it. It sort of covers for the legacy connection. It covers for the future connections. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, on-screen display, which could be controlled through a wireless mouse as well, uh, of, of course, also through the AP guy, API guide. And you could do different routings, display multiple connections, displaying single layout, two displays at the same time, three, four, up to seven. That's it. Yeah, so... Yeah. I hope that explains everything. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to, to post them. We'll be going into, into the questions very soon. Mark, do you have anything, anything else to no, say? No, I think that, that covers about, uh, about all of the features um, in a nutshell, yeah. as we say. Um, I, I just want to double check that everybody got it, uh, understood it exactly like this, but uh, the host one and host two is, in, in essence, individually available. So that's, in essence, auto-switching on their own. So first okay. in, first out. So you could connect the USB on the one side of the table, HDMI on the other side of the table, and vice versa. They're completely on their own. Of course, th uh, but this is not sp special to this unit, but you can't have one USB camera going to two, two PCs. That, of yeah. course, is not allowed in the rules of USB, unfortunately. Correct. But um, yes, so you can definitely uh, uh, first in, first out on that. So as soon as the second person who connected disconnects, jumps back to the first person's PC. And that's pretty, that's pretty seamless, pretty fast. Yeah. And then uh, maybe lastly, uh, before we get to the Q&A, yes. uh, as we mentioned with the uh, AV of IP encoders, uh, we are busy finalizing a video on the SMW42 as well. Uh, so that will be up in the next couple of days on, on the YouTube channel as well um, and accessible to, to go and review. And we'll cover a lot of what we've spoken about um, in it and uh, also actually physically showcasing how it functions. Yes. And, like, and definitely a look at the on-screen display, which I've, I've mentioned a couple of mm. times which you can on the fly, in essence, do some display changes and stuff as well. Correct. Um, yeah, so look out for that video. We'll, of course, we'll be posting on all our all our platforms. Um, yeah. Correct. So, okay. so we just, uh, again, have a couple of monitors here in front of us and our laptops and PCs uh, just running the broadcast. Uh, we're just peeking over and, and having a look. We don't see any specific questions at the moment. Um, but, uh, again, everybody's uh, welcome to post any, any questions for us in the, in the questions tab if there is any. Yeah, uh, don't see anything. So either we're really good at this or what is asleep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the two. There we go. There's a, there's a first question. All right. Are there audio latency issues when using IP decoder audio out? If so, are the settings, are there settings to adjust it? Um, yeah, so I'm assuming you're talking about the SM42S. Uh, so there isn't actually any way to, to adjust those audio settings, but I haven't, I haven't actually seen any delay. And also, vi video delay, there's also it's very little latency. We've set it up the other day, actually in the process of making that 42 video. Mm -hmm. We were looking at latency between two screens. We put two monitors up uh, next to each other, going through our entire corporate network. So running through a managed network, running through a bunch of IP ranges. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, there was basically zero latency between moving two mouse pointers uh, so that there's no latency really on the video, which would mean there's definitely no uh, latency really on the audio. And of course, the audio and video would be in sync. So yeah. um, I haven't really experienced any issues like that. Yeah, the, uh, the, the device will, will, will synchronize. So if we talk about the, the, the decoder, it'll, it'll synchronize the, the audio and the video um, together. 
Yeah, and then we have a question from Kelly, which actually a uh, brilliant point. Are these units DHCP? Can you assign a static IP address to them? So they are DHCP, but they do have the ability to function without a DHCP server on the network. That's actually how I had it set up originally for our video wall, mm -hmm. our own video wall. So then it uses self-assigned IP addresses, 169254 uh, link local addresses. And in essence, it's using the MAC addresses to communicate. So if you're controlling it, yeah. you're not using the IP addresses, but you are rather using the MAC, the addresses. MAC addresses. So on a layer two there, and that obviously that's never going to change on those units. So they aren't they, you can't really set a static IP on them. Uh, actually, I think you, you might, but you'd have to do it through the API guide. Um, I, I haven't personally done that before, but there's no issue if you're running it into an unmanaged network through a one PoE switch, for example, where you have no DHCP server present. And it just self-assigns and it, it functions like it should. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Kelly. All right. That seems to be it at the moment. Let's give it a second if anybody has any other questions. Yeah, uh, I think we're doing doing well on time. Um, okay, so uh, good. Uh, thank you. I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll close off maybe at this Absolutely. point, Marinas. Um, and uh, so thank you to everybody uh, for joining us. Oh, sorry, clicked away from the presentation. <laughs> Too many clickers. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, uh, again, we'll say thank you at this point. Uh, again, any questions, uh, please get in touch with us. Um, if you guys need us to help you with any solutions or, you know, figure out what products would work or want to discuss any of these products in a specific solution, uh, please please email us. Uh, get in touch with us uh, either through the website or for solution-based um, requests, you can actually mail solutions at alphatronelectronics.com. Right. Um, we've got a full team of technical guys in the background including Marinus and myself, uh, that can answer those questions and, and help you guys with, with some designs. Absolutely. And then, of course, there's also Zendesk on the website. Like Michael mentioned, there's obviously a couple of emails on there how to get hold of us and also Zendesk. Um, so, yeah, please get please get hold of us if you have any further questions. Um, yeah, Mike, like you mentioned, I think we did pretty well for time. We really wanted to keep it pretty compact. Yeah, uh, nice make and sure short. Everybody can carry on with their day after, yeah, after from this point. Good. Yeah, so that's that's it from us, Mike. That's it. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Have a good day. See you again soon.